Hello everybody, my name is Brian with Vitonic Health and I'm here today with Rumbero and we're going to show you how to assess your horse, find out where the pain points are at and what to do for them afterwards. Assessment is really a good thing to do before you ever start to do something with your horse because that tells you where your horse is at today and what's really going on with them. I always say to make sure that you assess your horse before you get on your horse to go riding, before you do any kind of groundwork, any kind of work you're going to be doing because then you know if we have a pain issue versus possibly a training issue or whatever else you're going to be doing so that way you understand what's going on and it doesn't take that much time. So the first thing that we do always is we do a opening of the bladder meridian. So I'm going to show you how to do that opening very simply. I'm going to take my hand and go backwards and I'm just going to draw the line that I'm going to be working along all the way up to the back of the ears. So one of the methods I use is I just start with my left hand here, my right hand beside it, and I run my hand down and bring the next hand and I try to keep my hands on the horse and my, I'm going to put the palms of my hand right over that area and I like the white back. I do it again. We do this three times on both sides. And what this does is it opens up what's called the bladder meridian and what the bladder meridian does is it tells us what's going on with our horse. So this is opening his energy to my energy. While I'm doing this I could be looking for being hot cold, um, anything that feels funny, any reactions he might be having. I'm just gonna move him up quick. Good boy. And now we go ahead and do the same thing to the opposite side. Run one hand down, run the hand over the over the top of the of the shoulder, a long line. And I always do is just put my fingertips right on the center of the horse. That's the easiest way to know that you're in the right spot. Rub my way back. Come down again. This is three times. Now that you've completed the, the bladder meridian opening on both sides, we're going to do a veterinarian acupuncture assessment. And uh, for the video, we have the rope on him, but I would like you to have a handler normally so that way if anything happens, because what we're looking for is we're looking for pain points. If uh, what are pain points, they could be doing like flinching, they could um, move away from the pen, they also could turn their head towards you. So uh, a handler is really good, so in case they do turn, and we're looking for ears that possibly can go backwards, feet that can come up, legs that come up, they may also kick. I like using the cap side of things and I'm going to be mainly using it at a 45 back and forth on the skin and I'm just going to do just hair to skin level for how hard, about four ounces of pressure. Some places where I want to push in I'll move the pen up and I will push in. So we're going to start at the head where we were working and we're going to be doing a series of movements coming across the muscles that are here and looking for a reaction. So we got a slight reaction at the base of the neck. I come over the withers. It's all right if you guys notice so we got a reaction right here, right at the back of the withers. I'll go this way so you guys can see it. So I'll just circle that with my pen. Horses that are clean makes it a little clearer. We got another one right at about bladder 21. And then we're going to come over the back. And we got one at bladder 25 all the way down to the back. So that's the main part of the bladder channel. It goes that quickly. Now I'm going to check over the hip itself and we got a little bit over the top of the, co of the coccyx underneath. We're going to look at the greater chicaner. That's not too bad. Now we're going to check at the sacral. Again we're over the coccyx so we got something going on here. We're going to check at the base of the withers and we definitely have something here and then front shoulder. And lastly, we're going to do, and I want you to t line up with the front of the horse's feet, facing the direction they are, put your hand over the top, reach to the center of the, and go right to the umbilicus and come up. If the horse comes way up, then more than likely you got some kind of uh, gastro issue going on. But right now I don't see too much, although this is stomach. Now we're gonna come back with the assessment again on this side. This is on the right side, behind the ears. Down the neck, slightly on the neck or the top. 
again at the back of the withers, at the sacral. So we're going to go over the top of the coccyx, under the coccyx, greater chicaner, sacral itself. Not as bad on this side. Back of the withers. And then we're going to check the front shoulder. And when we check the front shoulder, I like to put one hand on the other side. I come across, come down the center, push in slightly and work my way in to see if they come around and if there are problems, they would turn and look at you so you know what's going on. So first thing we notice right away that we have less on the right side than we have on the, on the left side. So um, that's pretty typical on horses that it will not match, but you do have to check both sides. So we got some reactions at the brachiocephalic, at the back of the withers, all these. When I get those kinds of things, a lot of times I always want to check the hyoid itself. So the hyoid is a pretty easy apparatus to check. This is a apparatus of seven bones that come from behind the TMJ down to the esophagus itself and, and centers the tongue. So when the hyoid is off, because there is no bone to bone connection here, it's all muscle and, t and uh, ligaments and tissue, then it's being pulled to one side. So what I mean by side is if it's off on the right, it's tight on the right, so it's pulling the apparatus to that direction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do first a very simple check where I put my fingers, my, especially my middle finger, just underneath where, where, this is underneath where the TMJ is, you'll feel a, a groove here. Put my fingers here on both sides, and I'm gonna have the head straight, and I'm just gonna push in with my fingers, and if it pops his head up a little bit, that usually means, as you can see, there's something going on there. So I already I would just go ahead and do the hyoid release. I wouldn't check anything more. But if we want to do a little bit more, we can feel underneath on both sides to see if the esophagus feels like it's off to one side. That's not necessary, but the other one was the check of the brachiocephalic at stomach 10 on both sides. And he's got a little more on the right than the left. So we got a pretty good reaction when we did test the hyoid. So what we're going to do now is that uh, we're going to take a look at <clears throat> taking care of the pain issues in his body and we all want horses to be out of pain so that way they can become our perfect partner that's with us and and trust us that we are not going to have them in pain and, and horses that you take out of pain are much more willing to do everything for you so um, it's, it's it's a great thing to do and we're just going to use our right light, or light therapy devices between pads lights and everything and show you how we do this so to relook at what we just did we had a little bit at the base of the brachial cephalic we have at the base of the withers and mainly over the coccyx tuberosity or the hip of the horse. So those would be the areas we'd be looking at now that we would want to take away the pain. Before we get started putting red light on a horse, we always want to make sure that there's no issue with the red light itself. So I'm going to turn my light on, bring it over to my horse, ask them to bring their head towards me and show them the light and hopefully they will touch it. And I'm just gonna put it right between the nostrils. This is gov governing vessel 26. It's a good place to get started. All right, good. So that was a reaction to the light. He already had some reaction to it. That's okay. And I'm gonna do one between the eyes. This is called yin tang. And I only need to sit here five to 30 seconds um, you're actually stimulating a point in two and a half seconds, so you can move pretty quickly. And then I'm going to do two points at one time here on the back. You could do one at a time if you want to. GB14 in Bakwe. This just really helps the horse get used to uh, we're putting lights on them and we're not going to be doing anything that's going to be affecting them as far as pain wise, but that sometimes it just need them to get used to what the feeling of the lights are on their body. And if you do get a lot, you can just back off and then work your way in. Works well too. And that would be the opening points on the, on the horse. So next we're gonna move to the hyoid release. So I'm already got the pain, the, the, the back pad on. So I'm gonna turn this on for 10 minutes. As you can see, I've got red and infrared on. I put this over the withers. <clears throat> I'm gonna put my lights if you got two lights, I like using one high power, one low power. It was off to the right, so I'm going to put the lower power on the left side, higher power on the right side. Right where we felt 
where we where we had the reaction and I'm going to place my hands on the horse and whatever he does with his head I'm just going to allow his head to move and I'm going to move with him so if he moves up this way and what I always tell everybody just mimic the same thing he does with his head with your head and that'll prevent any kind of accident you may have that because horses heads are they're definitely harder than our head oh good reaction buddy so one of the reactions we love to see is the lick and chew, the dropping of the head. But this typically takes 30 to 45 seconds. So I'm gonna stay with him just a little bit longer. It might've been all he needed, but I'm just going to make sure he gets enough that what he needs. And the minute that hyoid slips back into place where it belongs, pretty much the pain is gone. But I'm going to finish doing the three points. So there's the one underneath the TMJ. Now we're going to do one that's right up the bottom of the on inside inside of the mandibular ramus or inside of, of each side of the throat itself. And we're just going to sit here for about 30 seconds. Good boy. And then the last one we're going to do is right on stomach 10. Those were the three points that we had tested. So a lot of people ask me, why does the hyoid go out? Well, it's just kind of one of those things we just don't know. A lot of times it's from injury, it could come from birth, it could from from pulling always on from one side that we're always putting halters and they're out there playing around, exercising, jumping around. They have all kinds of reasons why. I think so there's another good reaction we were waiting for. Good boy. I'll try and get out of the way so the camera can see. So that grinding that you hear that they do with their teeth is an endorphin release. And it also typically when they feel comfort, they will do that. And we'll just take a quick look quick and just bring them back over. And I'm gonna press again and you can see there's no tossing of the head up at all and I'm actually pressing harder than I was before. So that's how quickly the hyoid can go back into place. So now we're gonna work on the body part itself. So we're going to do one light up at GV14. We're gonna put another light on high. I'm gonna come down the center of the pectorals where they come between, it's a real deep hole you can push in. It's about two inches from the center line, push into where you're into the third ring. And you sit here, this will release nine different muscles on the front of the horse. So what we're gonna try and do is take care of all this pain with us not having to know a whole lot to do. We've done all the work for you. So just by doing these series of points, you can actually take care of more some muscle and structural issues of going on with the horse. And if all the pain's gone when we're done, then you're good to move on and put them out or do your next step that you're gonna work with the horse with. But I always say, I like to have a good 24 hours for a horse to be, you know, after the red lighting, because you may have a more enthusiastic horse because there's no longer any pain or you might have a horse that's a little bit more sleepy. So you have either one of those two that typically comes out of, and I'm gonna sit here for about, about a minute total. And by the time I get done with the front, it should be a total of 10 minutes worth of time between doing the hyoid release and the front fascia release. I'm gonna do the opposite side. So I don't have to switch around and go to the other side when I'm doing it all from one side of the horse, which makes this very, very convenient. <clears throat> so this is where I call watching the grass grow. So while the lights are doing its work in between, that one minute can sometimes feel like 10 minutes, but to go ahead and stay in there, stay with the time it takes, and uh, you'll get a lot better results if you don't go too quick and you just take a little extra time to be here. Good boy. Because the lights have to have their time to do their work. All right, so that's looking pretty good. 
So after about 10 minutes worth of total time, we're now going to take and move the pad system back. We're going to turn it off. Because we're going to want to reset it for another 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and let that flop down. Move this to where it's just in front of the sacral points. Reach underneath, just like you're picking up a strap. Now these straps are very forgiving, so you don't have to worry about them wanting to buck. We turn the lights back on. And now we're going to do the rear fascia release. All right, that's looking good. So this is our essential line pad system. So this is the back pad itself. And uh, what well, I'm gonna show, I'm also going to put one on one of his feet for you. I'm actually gonna do that now. This is our half wrap. Um, I'm gonna put this on the foot only because what I like to do is I like to turn it on first. Bring it on and I'm gonna put it on this foot because we're having a little issue with him growing some heel on that foot. So I'm just gonna put it on, it makes it very simple to do, it's easy. Just make sure you put the battery to the outside and the cords so he doesn't, and you can tell how fast they feel that when, once that goes on. That's just all that's doing now is it's creating circulation to that foot so that blood flow and energy and everything goes through that foot and starts the uh, growing. All right, so we're gonna move to the back. It's, uh, the other thing that the uh, half wrap is doing for you is also stimulating all six tank points that are on each foot. So you're, that's a really great thing to do because that's the start and end of every meridian in the body. So, so what I like to do on the back is I put my hand at the base of the tail, come forward, and put it right on that point. It's right into the sacral themselves. And now we're going to put the red light on the bottom, find a stifle, I like to come in here with a light and rub this around to make sure that they're okay with you being in here. I'm gonna go up at a 45 till I find the division where I'm right behind the femur itself, and I'm gonna hold these two lights here. If a horse won't let you put it there, you can bring it to the outside and put it on the outside and get a pretty good results as well. But he's okay with us going in, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this light on him, and now we're gonna sit here. Now you might get some interesting re re um, reactions back here. The horse may start to sway back and forth, side to side. They may drop their hip. They may do nothing, but a lot of times I see them starting to move, which he's starting to now himself. And it's just them feeling through it. Uh, what's, what's going on back here? What this, one of the main things that this is releasing is one of those muscles that we have a very difficult time trying to release, and that's the psoas major and psoas minor muscle. And there are internal muscles that it's really tough to get to, but this works really well. Oh, there you go. As you can see, he's starting to sway a little bit. So we just let him go ahead and we just, I just move both my hands right with him. If he's going to sway, I'm going to sway. Just let him feel that movement back and forth. There, oh, there you go. To us red light people, swaying is very exciting because then we know something's happening. <laughs> uh, you see him reach up now. He's putting weight on this foot where he did before. And this you need to stay here a good 45 seconds to a minute and a half until you get really great results. Okay, I'm gonna take that as that one was done. I'm gonna leave this light here. You're not, I'm just gonna look over the horse at you. I'm gonna come around the same thing on the opposite side. I'm gonna put it on this side and we're gonna hold it inside of here. If a horse does try to kick you or anything in here, just make sure, then just switch and do the outside point until they get used to putting red lights on them. And what I'm looking for in the horse now is I'm looking for them to where they're just stop paying attention to everything else that's going out there and they're starting to get glassy eyed, they're starting to get into that sleepy mode. That's where we call it is where they're, they're um, starting to cook or they're starting to, the red lights are starting to do the word or work for you. So, um, They go from 
basically what they're doing is they're going from what's called sympathetic mode back into parasympathetic mode. So what parasympathetic mode is that uh, relax and uh, relaxation mode where they're no longer in the flight or fight. So they're, it, now they're connecting with me, they're, they're just starting to go into their zone and they are really starting to like what they're doing. So we're in rest and digestion. So this is a great thing when they get into this mode is it really helps the digestion system. Why I say that? Because one of the things that when we put lights on horses, one of the things it always does is it always stimulates serotonin. Serotonin is that great drug that's in your body that for horses causes digestion to start working. And for horse owners, all us horse owners, we want digestion to work well. And that's what we're really looking for. So lights are all still on. I think we're in a pretty good position already here. He went into his zone. So after that last 10 minutes of time, what we're doing, now we're gonna move up. We got four more points to do while we're in the back, is we wanna connect up what's called the longissimus dorsi muscle to the back. So you got your, you got your um, lumbar vertebra here. So this muscle attaches at the lumbar vertebra and comes all the way to where we're C4 through C7. So we're gonna take and put our lights now on each side of the front vertebra. And we're just gonna put them across from each other and we're gonna sit here about 30 seconds or so at each point of here, just to connect up and release that muscle. Because one of the things we have found that really works well with light therapy is muscles. So we can put it on the insertion attachment point of a muscle and we can release that muscle to lay out. And I was taking that tight muscle and just letting it relax without having to be over the whole muscle itself. So I'm just gonna go over C4. Now I'm gonna move down to C5. <laughs> now he's putting his weight actually on my arm. So um, one of the other things that's really important when you do muscle work is what's called fascia. So most of what we're doing right now is a fascia release where we're releasing two points to four points on, on the horse that is releasing nine muscles and not only the muscle but the fascia release that attaches those muscles and the fascia that's inside of the muscles themselves just to lay out. And uh, fascia is a very, very exciting topic and I tell, say to do a little more research on it if you have never heard of it before. But uh, fascia is what happens when we get really, really tight as we get older. We don't have as much mobility. And we get a lot of fascia buildup and that's where we gotta keep, keep mobility going. And with horses, the big thing is, is that we want to get them to move because as they move more, they get more circulation, they get better uh, movement of their, of their body. All right. So now we got the front done, the back done. We're gonna go ahead and take that pad off. Turn this off. Comes all off as one thing, just like you were taking off a uh, saddle pad. And now we're gonna relook at these areas that we had some problems. So nothing in the front anymore, nothing on the high end release brachiocephalic, nothing. Maybe a little there yet, but I'm gonna accept that. That's pretty good. That's really better. That's really better. All right, so that's what we're looking for. I think we had really bad at stomach 25 over here. You guys can see our pain is all gone. And that's where we wanna to get to now, because now we have a partner that's out of pain and now someone I'm putting a saddle on, I'm not, it's not hitting a pain, pain area and they're gonna jump or anything like that. I have a partner that's gonna willing to work with me and it feels better. And again, if you're not gonna ride or work right away, it's really good to give them 12 hours to 24 hours off so they can just process this and absorb it. This is where you wanna to get to be.